In almost all my previous videos, I've thrown away the term system calls. But what does that actually mean? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Muhammad, ladies and gentlemen, also known as Mohido. And today we are diving into the world of Linux system calls. Before we dive deeper, you need to know something important, which is that CPUs have two modes they can operate in, user mode and kernel mode. In user mode, the CPU is like someone wearing thick safety gloves. It, it cannot really touch anything dangerous. It cannot access the hardware directly. It cannot mess with other processes and it definitely cannot control your devices. Kernel mode, on the other hand, is where all the power lives. In the kernel mode, the CPU can access memory, perform device input output, send and receive network packets, create and destroy processes. Basically, it can do everything. When you write code, compile it, and run it, your program lives in user mode. But if your program needs to do something special, like reading from a disk, basically opening a file, sending network data, or maybe also creating a file, it needs to ask the kernel for help. And system calls are exactly that. A system call is when a program running in a user mode politely asks the kernel to perform a task on its behalf because the kernel operates in kernel mode and have privileges to do whatever it wants. Okay, good, but the question is, how does your program ask the kernel for help? Here is the basic flow. First of all, your program sets some CPU registers with information the kernel will need. The most important one is usually the EAX or RACS if you're on 64-bit systems. This is a register in the CPU and your application need to put a system call number on that register, the ID of the system call, the ID of the action you want the kernel to do. Then your program triggers a special CPU instruction to switch into kernel mode. In the old days, it was a interrupt, a CPU interrupt. Basically, you're switching a flag in the CPU and wait for the CPU to interpret that flag and switch to kernel mode. But now, in today's world, there is a specific CPU instruction called syscall, and this will literally switch the CPU into kernel mode. Now, when the CPU switches to kernel mode, the kernel wakes up. It saves the current CPU state, then reads the system call number you put into the register, remember, RAX register, or maybe X, and checks its internal lookup table to find which kernel function it should call. You can see the table mappings in the kernel source code, if you wish, at uh, the ARC, your computer architecture, kernel, and syscalls folder. Now, for example, if you want to change file permissions, your program sets the number 90 in the register as in the table, the lookup table, the kernel lookup table, for x86 CPUs, number 90 corresponds to the syscch mode function inside the kernel. And ch mode, if you do not know it, it's an operation that allows you to change file permissions on Linux. Now, all system call implementations are usually named with a prefix, and that prefix is the sys underscore inside the kernel code. And all of them returns a number. All of the system calls return a number, usually zero for success or a negative number for indicating an error. After the kernel finishes doing the work, it restores the CPU state, switches back to user mode, and gives control back to your program, along with the result of the system call. Now, you might be thinking, wait, I've never written code that sets CPU registers manually and never really had to call the syscall instruction and never really raise an interrupt if you are dealing with 32-bit systems. So, how does my program open a file when I wanted to open a file? That's a golden question. And the answer is abstraction. To hide all of this messy low-level work, libraries like the glibc, the GNU C library, provide you with wrapper functions. These wrappers handle setting up the registers, calling the syscall, checking for errors, and more than that, all without you even knowing. For example, when you call the printf function, you might think it's just printing text, but under the hood, it buffers your output. When the buffer fills up, or you call the flush function, it sets the registers properly. It triggers a system call, usually the right system call, to actually send the data to the terminal. And if anything goes wrong, it sets the global error number variable for you. Even your first Hello World program was extremely complicated, but you didn't know that because of the abstractions of these libraries. Or as Hussein Nasser says, there is no simple code, 
there is a code that looks simple. If you dig deep enough, you'll always find complexity. And this is one of the most beautiful quotes I've ever seen because it really resembles how how libraries, the standard libraries are hiding all of this complexity, dealing with the kernel, different kernels maybe, and it just provides you with this beautiful abstraction. Anyway, in summary, let's quickly recap the journey of a system call. First of all, your program sets up a CPU register. Basically, that's hidden behind a library, a library function, which basically puts the system call number into the one of the CPU registers. Then, it uses a special instruction to switch the CPU into kernel mode. Basically, that can be an interrupt or a CPU instruction that depends on the CPU architecture. Then, the kernel wakes up and saves the current CPU state. It looks up the current system call function, it search for it, basically in its lookup table, and it executes that function, which is just deep kernel magic happens there. The function returns a result, basically success or error, the kernel restores the CPU, it passes the result back to your program, basically injecting it to the stack, and then the CPU switches back to user mode and your program continues. That wraps the main concept of system calls. And if you want to learn more, you can explore the system calls with the man syscalls command, and then you can look up specific system calls by using the command man, for example, search mode, and put two because two resembles system calls in the parentheses. I hope you enjoyed this dive into the magical world of system calls. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want to learn more about Linux, Drop a comment down below, click here, here, and here, you know, YouTube stuff. Your support on Patreon also really means the world to me. Thank you very much, and until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.